Hi and welcome to this video where I'm going to be showing you how to dry run an algorithm using a trace table. So what exactly is dry running an algorithm then? Dry running an algorithm means to execute its instructions step by step by hand. This is almost always done using a trace table to hold the values of each variable as the algorithm proceeds. Dry running is a vital skill for any programmer as it allows you to plan and test algorithms before you write any code. Dry running can also be really useful for identifying difficult to find bugs, we call those logic errors, in your code by taking a suspect portion and meticulously checking exactly what is happening step by step. So what then is a trace table? Well, a trace table is a table used to store the values of each variable within an algorithm. Each time a variable changes value, this gets recorded in the trace table. Trace tables contain a column for each variable in the algorithm, and often an additional column to show any outputs generated by the algorithm while it proceeds. So let me show you how this works with a few examples. The basic rule when setting out a trace table is to use a column for each variable in the algorithm and another column perhaps for the output that the algorithm is going to generate if there's an output or a print or something like that. So in this algorithm we've got three variables, we've got x, sorry, two variables x and y and we have an output. So we're going to need three columns in our trace table. So here's a trace table and I'm just going to lay out uh, the column headers. So I'll do one for x, y and output. And then we just work through the algorithm, um, just writing down the value of the variables as they change line by line through the algorithm. So this one begins on this line 4x equals 1 to 5. So that means we've got a for loop, which uh, means the contents of this loop are going to repeat uh, for as many times as all the values of x. So in this case, x is going to take the values 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So this loop is going to run five times. Each time it, each time it runs, x is going to be the next sequential value, starting at 1, working up to 5. So the first time this runs around, x is going to be 1. So we put a 1 in the x column of our trace table. And then inside that loop, we can see that we've got an operation here saying y is going to be equal to x multiplied by 3. So uh, y is going to be the current value of x, which is 1, multiplied by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3 and there's no output to generate yet so we just go around it says next x so we go back up to the top of the for loop and now um, x is going to take the value 2 so we put a 2 in our x column and y is going to take the value x times 3 again which now is 2 times 3 so that's going to be 6 and again there's no output so we go back to the top of the for loop x is now 3 so we put that in our trace table and y is going to be 3 times 3, so y is going to be 9. We go on to the next x. x is now 4. y is 3 times 4, so it's going to be 12. And finally, we go around to the for loop again for a fifth time. So x is now 5. And y is equal to x times 3, which is 15. And we don't repeat the for loop again now because x has taken all of the values that it's designed to take, or it's intended to take. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So we're finished with the for loop, so execution jumps down to the output y statement. So the output in our algorithm is going to be the current value of y, which if we look at our trace table, we can see is 15. So we're just going to output 15, and that is the end of the algorithm. In this algorithm, we have got three variables, a, x, and y, and an output. So we're going to have four columns in our trace table. And just like before, I will put the names of the variables as the headers to the columns. So I've got A, X, Y, and output. So in this algorithm, we start off by setting the value of A to four. So that goes into my trace table in the A column. A is four. And Y is going to get the value zero. So we put that in the Y column. Now, the next line says for x is going to be equal to 1 to a. So that's interesting because a is a variable. Well, its value is 4, which means that the for loop is going to run four times. 
x is going to take the value 1, 2, 3 and 4 each time it repeats. So the first value of x is going to be 1 and I'm going to put that in the x column but I'm going to put it on a new line um, because every time a, a for loop begins or a while loop or something it can be helpful to put that on a new line because it kind of tells you in your trace table um, that this is part of a new section of the code. So I've put x is 1 and while x is 1 what happens to y? Well y is set to be itself which currently is 0 plus x times a. Remember a is 4 x is 1 so this is like saying y is going to be equal to 0 plus 4 times or 1 times 4 or just 4. So y is now going to take the value 4 so I put that in the y column and my for loop everything is finished inside my for loop so it goes around and starts again. Now x is 2 and this time I have to update the value of y so y is equal to itself which is 4 plus x times a which is 2 times a which is 2 times 4 so that's 8 so it's going to be 4 plus 8 which is 12. Okay and now my for loop repeats again with x as 3 so this time around y is going to be itself which is 12 plus 3 times 4 which is 12 so it's going to be 12 plus 12 so it's going to be 24 so x is 3 I didn't fill that in and uh, y is going to be itself which is 12 plus 12 so 24 okay and now my for loop is going to repeat for the last time x is now 4 so y is going to be itself which is 24 plus um, 4 which is the value of x so 4 times 4 which is 16 so 24 plus 16 is 40 so the final value um, and that's our for loop finished, I should say. So the final value of y is 40, and that's what we output at the end of the algorithm. So the output is 40. In this example, we've got four variables, a, b, x, and y, and um, one output. So we are going to have five columns in our trace table. So again, I'm just going to put in the column headers, a, b, x, y, and output. And on the very first line of the algorithm, we can see that the values for a, b, and y are assigned. So a is 3, so I'll put that in my trace table. b is 2, and y is 0. And there's no value at this stage given for x. Now, if you remember from the last example, I said that when we start a for loop or a while loop, um, it's useful to start a new line in our trace table. So this value of x equals 1, um, the first value of x in the for loop, is going to go on a new line. So I'll put x is 1. Now inside the for loop this time, we've got um, an if statement. The if statement says if x mod 2 is equal to 0, what on earth does that mean? Well, the mod operator returns the remainder of a division between two numbers. So for example, if I took 9 mod 4, it's like saying what's 9 divided by 4 uh, and what's the remainder you get from that. So if I take 9 and divide it by 4 I get 8 and 1 fourth or a quarter. Okay, The remainder is 1. So 9 mod 4 is 1. So what we're saying here is if x divided by 2 has no remainder, or it goes into 2 or 2 goes into x completely. So if, if I can divide x by 2 and get no remainder, then we're going to run that first bit of code that says y is equal to a times y plus b times x. Otherwise, or else, we're going to run the line of code that says y is equal to itself plus b times x. So let's have a look at that. x is 1. If I divide 1 by 2, I get uh, 0 with remainder 1, or 0 0.5, or 0 and 1 over 2 remaining. So the remainder of 1 divided by 2 is 1, not 0. So we're not going to run the code under the if statement. Instead, we're going to run the code under the else statement, which is just simply to say that y is equal to itself plus whatever the value of b is times whatever the value of x is. So in this case, 
y is equal to itself, which is 0, plus b times x. And b is 2, x is 1, so y is going to be 2. OK, let's take our for loop round again. Now x is going to be 2, so we'll put that in our trace table. Now 2 divided by 2 does go completely, leaving no remainder. So 2 mod 2 will equal 0, in which case we run the top line now. So y is going to be equal to itself, uh, sorry, yes, itself multiplied by a, so that's 3 times 2, or 6, plus b times x. b is 2, x is 2, so that's 4, so 6 plus 4 is 10. So y is going to take the value of 10. Let's go around the for loop again. x is now 3. 3, when divided by 2, leaves a remainder of 1. So 3 mod 2 is 1. So we go to the bottom branch. y is equal to itself plus b times x. So y is 10 uh, plus um, b, which is 2, times x, which is 3. So uh, that's going to be 10 plus 6 is 16. So that goes in the y column. And we go round the for loop again. x is now 4. 4 mod 2 equals 0 because 2 divides complete. Uh, 4 can be divided by 2 with no remainder. So we now run that top line again. So y is going to be equal to 3 times 16 plus 2 times 4. So 3 times 16 is equal to uh, 30 plus 18 is 48. Okay, so 3 times 16 is 48 plus 2 times 4, which is 8. So it's going to be 48 plus 8 is 56. And now we can go around our for loop again. Uh, for the final time, x is now equal to 5. And so 5 mod 2 uh, leaves a remainder of 1 again. So we're going to go to the else branch. So now um, y is going to be equal to itself, which is 56, plus b, which is 2, times x, which is 5, so that's 10. Uh, so it's going to be 56 plus 10, which is 66. And we've now finished our for loop, and the output is simply the final value of y, which is 66. In this example, we're going to be using an array that stores multiple values, or you may uh, have heard of the word list, if you use Python particularly. So we've got an array or a list containing the values 4, 2, 7, and 6. We've got a variable, max, and we've got um, a variable, x. Now, the values in data don't change, so we don't actually need to necessarily record that in our trace table, but we are going to be changing the value of max and the value of x. So we want to, again, set out our trace table with max, x, and output. And the first line of our um, algorithm just defines the value of data, the, the items in the data array. So we don't need to record that in our trace table. So we go to the next line, where we set max to be equal to 0. And our for loop is going to run from, with x being the value 0, up to the length of data minus 1. Well, the length of data is 4, because there's 4 items in the data array. Minus 1 means it's going to run up to the value 3. So x is going to take the values 0, 1, 2, and 3. So x starts at 0, and I'm going to put it on a new line because it's a new for loop. And then we say if data x, which is data 0, which is the first item in the data array. So that's the item 4. So we can now say if 4 is bigger than max, max is 0. So we can say, well, if 4 is bigger than 0, yes, it is, then we need to set max to be equal to data x, data position 0, the value 4. So max is going to be set to 4. So we now update max and set it to 4. Okay. We can now go to the next value of x in our for loop. So x is now going to be 1. And we uh, once again, we run our little if test. If data 1 this time is greater than max, well, data 1 is the second item. That's 2. 
and max is four. So this is saying if two is bigger than four. Well, it's not. So we don't have to do anything. We just go straight down to next x and we start our for loop again. So we're now gonna go to x is two. If data two, that's the third item, so that's seven, is bigger than max, max is four, so seven is bigger than max. So we are going to run the code inside the if statement, and we're gonna set max to be equal to data two, which is the value seven. So max is going to be equal now to seven. Okay, and uh, we can go to next x, we go back to the start of the for loop, and we run for the last time now because length data minus one, remember, is four minus one, which is three. So x is going to be three, so that's the last time around the loop. We say if data three, that's the fourth item in the data list, uh, which is the value six, is greater than max. Well, max is seven, so six is not bigger than seven, so we don't have to do anything. Um, and there's nothing else to do for our for loop, so we can go to the output. And the output statement is simply to output the value of max which is seven and that's the end of our algorithm and if we were asked to describe the purpose of this algorithm we might be able to look for the names of the variables for some clues we've got a variable called max well that probably means maximum um, and let's just see what happens we're going through each item in our list one by one by one and every time we find a bigger item or a bigger value than the current value of max, we replace it with that item. In other words, max is always going to store the biggest value we've found. So a good interpretation of this algorithm would be to say that this algorithm finds the largest value in a list of numbers and outputs that largest value. For our final example, we're back to only three variables, x, y, and z and an output. So we've got four columns in our trace table and I'll put my headers in x, y, z and output. But notice that in this algorithm we have got um, a for loop inside another for loop. This is called a nested for loop and how this works is that the inner for loop is repeated completely or you know as many repeats as it needs to make um, happen for every repeat or iteration of the outer for loop. So while x is 1, y is going to be 1, then 2. Then x will go to being 2 and y will become 1 again and 2 again and then x is going to become 3 and y starts all over again at 1 and then 2. So let's just see how that plays out. Our first line of our algorithm says x is going to be one to three. So the first value of x is going to be one. Now remember I said that when we start a new for loop, it can be helpful to go onto a new line. So with the value of y being set to one, we're gonna put that on a new line. And z is going to be equal to the value of x times y, which is one times one. So z is gonna be one. So the y loop, the y for loop, has uh, done its code, so it now repeats, and we set y to 2. z is now x times y again, so that's 1 times 2, so z is 2. That y for loop has now completely finished running, and so we now jump to the line that says next x, and from there we go to the x for loop again, but we've increased the value now of x to two. So with x set as two, we're gonna start the y for loop all over again on a new line with y equals one. And z is going to be equal to uh, x, which is two, times y, which is one, so z will be two. Uh, now we go back to the beginning of the y for loop and set y to two, and z is gonna be equal to x times y again, which is two times two, so that's four. The y loop has now completely finished and we go back to the x for loop again, where x is now going to take the value three. Now I'm gonna run out of lines in my trace table, so I'm gonna to need to make some more space. And we're now going to be able to set, uh, we're gonna start the y for loop all over again with y is one, z is equal to x times y, which is three times one, so that's three and we go to um, 
for the second iteration of the y for loop. So y is now two. X is going to z is going to be x times y. So that's three times two, which is six. And now we've finished our y for loop. We've also finished our x for loop because x has been one, two, three, and it's now finished. So we can go to the output, where we output the final value of z, which is 6. So thanks for watching. I hope you found this video helpful for understanding how to use trace tables and to dry run an algorithm. If you've got any questions or feedback, please just leave them in the comments.